Well, hello everybody, and welcome to Social Distancing Diary. Bear with me today, as the room I'm in is a little bit spartan, not my usual broadcast studio. Uh, that's because there's uh, some adjoining noise uh, from the room uh, next to it, and so I came over to this room that we are repainting and replacing the floor in uh, in these downtimes, so I'm taking advantage of doing those things. And luckily, there's an open room for me to come in and blast out a video to you. Today's video featuring rookie cards and uh, game-used relics and a couple of autographs from non-Dodgers. Now, we'll start out with the rookie cards, a binder page, one binder page. Um, the reason that I have these are, uh, I mentioned before, when I first got into collecting uh, early 90s, <clears throat> I read a book, How to uh, Invest in Baseball Cards and Make Money. And uh, one of the suggestions that they had was buy rookie cards of Hall of Famers or potential Hall of Famers, best quality that you can, best condition that you can, and if you haven't got the budget for the rookie card, get the second year card. And so I have some examples of both. Some of them I, I pulled from packs and some of them came to me uh, through trades or I picked up at shows. So let's see what have we got here. And, and some are not really what is recognized as the most common rookie card. They're just what I could get uh, through my collecting and the best that I could do. So uh, uh, here we go. Let's start off with Mark McGuire, Topps All-Star Rookie Cup. Okay, so this is like the earliest Mark McGuire that I have and pretty much the earliest that I care to chase because after I got my hands on this card, then he started becoming the tainted cheater and uh, what do I care? I don't want to chase the, an expensive rookie card of a tainted cheater. But I should have a McGuire in my collection. All right, so that's what I have there. Rated rookie Mark McGuire. So I didn't work too hard at chasing that. And speaking of other tainted athletes, here's another guy that I liked. And I got a, made sure I got a rookie card of his because I you know, wanted him. And I saw him as potential Hall of Fame and so on. But another guy that got tainted by the scandals of steroids, Roger Clemens, okay? So I picked this up. But as you can see, uh, you know, I followed what they said and tried to get the best condition that you can. I'm sure I picked that up at a show or something. Here's another one that I picked up at a show. Uh, Baseball America, top AA prospects. Look at who that is. <laughs> Just everybody from this era is tainted, right? But I liked this card because it goes even beyond. It's a double A prospect of Sammy Sosa. All right, and besides, there are still some people out there who collect these guys and they may appreciate seeing these rookie and pre-rookie cards from them. Who have we got here? This I pulled from a pack. Uh, top prospects, uh, shortstops. Who's the big guy here? Hmm. Oh, Chipper Jones. Top prospects with a Chipper Jones on there, okay? Not an official rookie and probably not very expensive, but it's still an early card that shows him to be a prospect, and so I appreciate that. Um, luckily, Chipper Jones hasn't been uh, too much controversy, so I don't mind that. Here's Willie Randolph. I think this one is the rookie card for Willie Randolph. I'm a fan of his, as I... Uh, like to collect some Yankees and also uh, Randolph came and played over for the Dodgers and he made a good show of it. He did not embarrass himself or embarrass the Dodgers. So I'm happy. I think this is the rookie and I think this is the second year card for Willie Randolph with his all-star rookie cup. All right, there's a very nice card. Look at how young he is, right? Okay, who else have we got? We got Jim Tomei, who also came over to play with the Dodgers for a little while. Rated rookie. This card is probably worth a quarter, but it doesn't matter. It's an early card of Tomei, and I appreciate having it. Here we go. Paul Molitor. Now, I could, couldn't you know, really get my hands on a Paul Molitor um, rookie card, 
but I believe this is his second year card, bought in the best condition that I could find it at the time, bought at a card show. And so there we go, Paul Molitor. I really like that card. Here's the back also, good shape, good ink, you know, no ink spots, well-centered, uh, pretty much 80-20 maybe. Here we go, rookie card of Matt Williams. I have a couple of giants. These guys were teammates. And, back, and I respected them and I hated them. Back in the days when they played the Dodgers, these were the guys that you didn't want to see come to bat. Will Clark, Matt Williams. Remember when Matt Williams used to come to bat? <laughs> if you watched him play, you know what that means. All right, so there's those guys. How about Paul Molitor again? Here we go, another early in the career, another early Molitor card. I like this one. I like the uh, at-bat, in-action, old times look. Stirrups? Stirrups, anybody? How about a Kirk Gibson rookie? You got to have him, right? Tiger fans want this card. Dodger fans want this card. Gibby. Bob Manningly. Don Manningly. Uh, also, because I collect some of, you know, those special Yankees, and this was before he became the manager of the Dodgers, kind of lost some of his luster on me because I didn't like a Yankee managing the Dodgers. And on top of that, he wasn't very good. But he was a good ball player. And so, maddening me. How about Ken Griffey Jr.? I cannot afford one of those uh, most referred to as rookie card of Ken Griffey, but this will work. This will do good enough for me. Ken Griffey Jr., how about an early Bo Jackson? Look at that. Bo Jackson playing in minor leagues. So it's a minor league star regional card for Bo Jackson. There you go. Minor league stats on the back. How about Catfish Hunter? There you go. So I love this card here. You got to have, you got to have the uh, Hall of Famers and well storied ball players in your collection. Speaking of them, Reginald Martinez Jackson. There you go. Mr. October looking very, very young. Mr. World Series cheater. He had many phases of his career and all of them were pretty well great. Okay, they weren't always great for my teams, but uh, you can't deny the man. So Reggie Jackson. Beautiful card. There we go. And speaking of the cheaters of the day, but I guess you got to have them in your collection. One, Barry Bonds. Boo, done with that card. Okay, here we go. Second half, we're going to have one binder page of um, game used relics and so on. Some of these came to me from trades. Uh, some of them I got at, at card shows. Forgive me if... Uh, you gave it to me, and I don't remember to mention your name. But as I say before, uh, take heart in the fact that uh, it's here in my favorite binders of favorite cards. So I love the cards that you sent to me. Here we go. Starting off with um, the favorite ball player of my college roommate, who also ended up being tainted by the steroid scandals, old number 99 but it's a it's a very nice looking card so i like it and i always keep it because he reminds me oh benito reminds me of my college roommate here we go next up here's a classic this is also a limited edition number 15 of 75 game used hall of famer boston red sox look at that on a mirror finish, limited edition card, Carl Yastrzemski. I love it. That's a great looking swatch of history. And speaking of swatches of history, the greatest catcher to ever play the game. I got this from one of my fellow collectors. How about this baby? Look at that. The man with the big bat, the greatest catcher ever. Played well behind the plate. The guy who taught an entire generation and perhaps the entire future of baseball to catch with one hand behind the back to keep the hand free from injury. Johnny B. Johnny Bench. There you go. From the Big Red Machine. A beautiful card with a lot 
of bat because that's what Johnny Bench had when he played a whole lot of bat. Love that card. Okay, here we go. Let's jump to what we got. Okay, another. This is um, limited edition number 66 of 99. Less than 100 of these swatch cards running around of Schmitty. Less than 100. I've got one. How's that, baby? Look at that. With a red Philly stripe on it. Awesome card. The back, eh, not much going on there, but it's all about the front of that card. Beautiful. Look at that. Very cool. Okay, who else have we got? All more, more great ball players. This is a mini. Bob Gibson pitching. It's a smaller one. Bob Gibson pitching at Dodger Stadium. Look at that baby. Back in the 60s, old game used jersey. Brilliant card. Wonderful card. It's in the seal. I, I kept it in the wrapper. I haven't even bothered to ever take it out. Look at the fold in the swatch. The fold or the seam or something there. I geek out about that kind of stuff. So this is this is awesome. Here we go. Next up, <clears throat> what have we got here? Uh, this is also another swatch of another Hall of Fame guy that I gotta have in my collection. Non-Dodger, but you gotta have the killer. You gotta have Killer Brew. Look at this. Great card. Beautiful design, well designed. Look at the awesome shot of him at the bat and then the designed holder for the swatch of jersey. That's a beautiful, awesome card. I love this card. Back of it, eh, not, not, nothing great. And all they did was repeat. All they did was repeat the same photo in the back. So eh, a little bit bunk on the imagination. So that was the last of the swatches, and then I have two quick autographs to show you because they're a little bit spillover from my non-Dodger autograph cards. Binder sheets are full, so these kind of spill over. So these ended up in the swatch uh, page. But still, nice cards to look at nevertheless. Here we go. How about this autograph that I received through the mail? Send the cards through the mail to the late, great Kirby Puckett. He signed two of these for me with a beautiful signature. Such a nice guy to have done this for me. Uh, this was before his eyesight even started going. Love this autograph card. And finally, <clears throat> this is nobody you ever heard of probably, but a friend of the families who made it to the bigs. And so I got an autograph of his when he used to play for the Angels, Rene Gonzalez local kid from here in San Gabriel Valley. Now, you may never have heard of Rene Gonzalez unless you're an Angels fan, <clears throat> but I'll tell you why, a very big reason why you may not have heard of him. Trivia. You know why you didn't hear of Rene Gonzalez? Because he was the backup shortstop later when he was traded to the Baltimore Orioles. He was the backup shortstop for, can you guess who? Cal Ripken Jr. How are you going to get a break and get into a game with Cal Ripken Jr. on his streak? <laughs> so no way Rene could break through. But what's nice also for his career was he was playing backup at the time that Ripken Jr. was on his quest to become, uh, you know, the longest playing streak ever over the Iron Horse, the Iron Man. Rene Gonzalez was in the dugout for the chase and in the dugout on the night that Cal Ripken Jr. broke Lou Gehrig's record. So his claim to fame is, I may not have played in a whole lot of games or became a star, but boy, I sat next to a legend. And I guess that'll have to do. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Probably get into a Dodgers binder and pull out some Dodgers. See you later. Be safe out there. Peace.